One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video guys. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas here. And today I'm gonna to be doing a video on things I wish I knew before I started trading. This is for longs and for shorts. This, this video doesn't really have a preference. Uh, some of my other videos have been kind of like, you know, how to spot a short trap or, you know, how to uh, long first bounce or whatever. But this one's really kind of a neutral video for longs and shorts. And it's just things that I wish I knew before I started trading. Obviously, I'm not, you know, a licensed financial advisor or anything like that. This is all for educational purposes. But without further ado, I'm just going to get started. So number one thing is plan your trades. So have you drawn your lines? Have you, have you prepared, have you drawn the levels that you needed to have drawn um, in order to kind of prepare you for the open? Have you checked FinVids? Do you know the float of the stock? Is it a higher, is it a, you know, a higher float stock? Is it a lower float stock? All these things matter. You know, you can check big charts for lines as well. It's part of Bow's process. Uh, Joe talked about it in the boot camp. you know, Bear as well. So a lot of people use big charts as well for lines. You know, are we above or below VWAP? Who's trapped in this scenario? Usually if it's kind of pre-market, we usually start out above VWAP, but sometimes we have stocks that have faded and maybe trapped longs. So, you know, are we above or below VWAP? What side is in control? And, you know, um, do you have all your levels drawn and are you prepared for the open? And I think uh, a big thing in planning your trades that a lot of people kind of overlook is what is your risk going to be? You know, if you're chasing at the highs of 150, you know, sometimes your, your risk reward is going to get skewed there because, you know, a lot of these times when stocks spike, they want to they wanna pull back and, you know, are you the one that's going to be stopped out because you've been chasing at the highs? So that's another thing. What is your risk? And, you know, again, context is always going to be key. You know, are we are we front side? Are we back side? Are we getting a lot of volume? You know, there's all these things. Do they have a shelf? Do they have a, um, you know, do they have something else to keep in mind? Is it is it a recent runner that is now gapped up for the second time? So all these things are very, very key. And don't chase, you know, be a sniper. Let trades come to you. When you go looking for trades, uh, you'll lose, but if you're kind of sitting in your seat, you're waiting for edge, you have a 100% better chance. I'll give you an example of this. If you're a short seller and you see three stocks that are all front side, you know, they, they, they blow right past your levels at the open, they're spiking, there's no need to go and try and pick that top. What you can do is wait for a death candle or wait for a shift in, shift in momentum like I talked about and that is you know going to give you a 100% better chance. If you're a long trader and you see you know three stocks out of the open you know kind of pop you know you're, you're going to be looking to kind of buy on a dip. You're not going to be looking to chase. You're going to be looking to buy dips front side right and you know as a as a trader at the open, you know, you're that's just sitting on your hands waiting for for edge to appear. You know, you're not going to be forcing trade. Hey guys, my name is Toss Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and moderators at my investing club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. You just need to really stick to your plan and, uh, you know, stop out when you're wrong all the time. Uh, if you lose on a trade and you try and enter into another one right away, you're probably going to have a 99.9% .9 chance of losing. This is something when I first started, I would take a loss and right away. I'd be, okay, what, what's the next thing running? Or what's the next thing tanking? Or what, what, how can I get this money back right away? How can I, how can I, how can I, you know, get back what I just lost right away? And in trading, that is not the way to do it. You need to, to sit on your hands. You need to wait, just like I kind of talked about. And sometimes you may only have two or three opportunities in a day where you have edge. And it's your job to exploit that. Rather than over trading, making 30 trades in a day, pick those two or three where you can exploit it and really have edge. I think that that's really important and something that, you know, if you work on that skill, that skill is very, very valuable. 
Chasing will be the death of your account. I see a lot of longs. Uh, they'll look to chase moves into the highs and they'll be selling at the lows. And what you really need to be do is, or what you really need to be doing is uh, taking into account the context of the chart, uh, what's going on, who's trapped, um, you know, your levels that you have already pre-drawn. You need to be paying attention into all of that. And the lastly, I'd say trade the chart, not the PL, right? If you're if you're seeing a stock on the backside, it's probably not the best idea to long, especially if you're longing out of FOMO to try and get money back. And if you're if you're a, a short trader, it's not the best idea to try and front or fight front side and try and guess. Wait for that shift in momentum. Wait for that backside. Wait. Just be patient. Be, just be super patient and just let the trade come to you. This one, I'm, I'm kind of passionate about it because I do do, you know, I record my screens every day, you know, um, I, I work really, this is a skill that, you know, I work really, really hard at, but it's something that I feel has been uh, exploited. I feel that uh, we've had a lot of furus and people who just don't know what they're talking about come on and, and speak about this subject. And it's something that, you know, I honestly get kind of offended by it because I see, buy my course, I'll teach you how to read the tape or how to read level two, hands on the buy button. You know, for me, uh, that is, you know, I just, I, I get a little bit angry because, you know, you really need to use the context with this one. And a lot of, I get messages every single day. Harry, what'd you see on the tape there in order for you to make the buy? It's like, okay, tape reading is, is something that, you gain over years of experience, but it's not necessarily, you know, a buyer or a sell signal. All you're doing with the tape is collecting information. You may notice that there, there is a seller. You may notice that there is a buyer. Buyers can go lower. Sellers can go higher. And there's a good quote that um, I heard where it's like stocks are moved. You know, they don't, they like stocks are moved. You know, they don't, they don't just kind of move on their own. Like they're, 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 they're moved, right? So buyers can drop lower and sellers can go, you know, can go higher. It, it's, it's something that, you know, I, it's not the holy grail and you can't just be looking at the tape all the time and basing your trading decisions off the tape all the time, right? And that's why I said over recent years, there's been a lot of misinformation about the tape being spread just to sell a FURU course, right? I hear all the time, you know, my tape reading signals or, if you didn't know how to read the tape here, or how tape reading helped our traders make a million dollars this year, right? Like that's that's right. There's obviously more than than the tape that's helping them make that money, right? It comes down to to lines. It comes down to context. It comes down to who is trapped, right? And when I was first trying to read the tape, I thought this as well. Where now I'm just kind of using it, or I'm half using it to just kind of confirm a plan. But before I would just stare at it. I would just stare at it all day when I was first getting started and say, okay, I'm going to look for this, this hidden buyer or this hidden seller as a long, and that's going to make me millions, right? But at the end of the day, if people had these level two signals as they claim, you know, they'd be billionaires. And also, why would they be going out of their way to just share it, right? Why would, if you had a billion dollar, you know, humans are selfish. If you had a billion dollar tape reading whatever uh, signal, you know, why'd you go out of your way and say, buy my course and do whatever, right? So I find the tape has been really exploited by, by you know, furu, furu marketers. And, you know, it just disgusts me a little bit because you have all these new traders coming in thinking that, oh, it's the tape that's going to make me money. I'm just going to stare at this all the time. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.